Ruler School is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory and these amazing patrons. Extra special thank you to guest lecturer patrons Brody Harris and Lance Albertson. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Paul, and I'm bringing you a giant mega report today because we had three GPs this past weekend. Um, all of those are going to be for Madrid, Paris, and Malaysia. And again, sorry, this is also coming out late. Like, I know last week's video was late too. Um, I've been sick as a dog, and so I don't know what's going on, but uh, end of July, beginning of August, not going super well for me. But um, I'm here, my voice is cleared up, so I'm able to sort of uh, give you this report without any issues. Um, but I just wanted to give you, this is a huge, huge, huge report. Um, this actually took me a long time to put together. So um, because of that, if you, would, if you wouldn't mind, go down in the description, uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, hit like if you like the video. Um, that is a huge help for me because that helps me know like what works in this video format and what doesn't. Um, and leave a comment down below. Um, there's always a question at the end of these videos, but if there's anything in the video that gets you thinking, um, I want to talk to you about it. So go down in the description, um, hit subscribe, hit like again if you really like this video, and go down in the comments and let's just start having a conversation because there's a lot going on here and I can't wait to talk to you about it. So first off, um, let's talk about uh, GP uh, Madrid. So Madrid and Paris are all uh, Rhea block only or Rhea Cluster, because I'm trying not to use magic terminology. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, GP Madrid was uh, Rhea Cluster as well as um, GP Paris. So you're going to notice some cards that are not included in the list from Lapis Cluster, and that's because, well, they're not allowed. Um, there's also a, a small change in the ban list that is made for Rhea Cluster um, that is not made for New Frontiers, and that's that Dijini, um, you'll see it on the screen right now, uh, Dijini is actually not banned um, for Shahrazad. So you're going to see that card um, included in the deck list down below um, for a lot of Shahrazad lists. It's a pretty strong resonator, and it's, uh, it's something that Shahrazad gets to make use of because of this just different format. But anyway, uh, let's just get into the ruler breakdown for GP Madrid. So there are about 105 people in GP Madrid, so this is a huge, uh, like, Rome level, Rome size rather, uh, event. Um, so GP Madrid is huge, it's got about 21 Scheherazade players, 20 gills, 19 times spinning witch, 11 Kyrix, 10 Tagris, um, 9 Ayu, 5 Shaylas, 4 Farers, 2 CLs, uh, two Imols and then two Reyes. So if you're wondering what the format is going to look like going into uh, the new Valhalla, new Frontiers um, sort of format, these are this is kind of a good snapshot of what the meta is going to look like um, with just Rhea Cluster moving into that. So these are probably your top six rulers that you want to be looking at um, playing in addition to any of the new rulers that come out um, for uh, the structure decks that we're going to be seeing in a few weeks. So. Just keep that in mind, these are the rulers that you really want to keep your eyes on. Um, any of these other rulers might get generic support that might help them out a lot. Um, I wouldn't count on it because, I mean, it's generally something that doesn't happen. But just keep an eye on these six because you're actually going to see uh, quite a number of these uh, do pretty well in the list that we have going forward. And speaking of lists, uh, here's the top eight deck lists. Um, these are not gotcha logs, but I do have them all down in the description for you in a Dropbox folder that you can just view. Um, it's shareable, you can click the link and just view them all. So if you need to download them, they're there. Um, if that's helpful for you, it's all right there for you. Um, but these are not gotcha logs, so they're gonna be a little bit easier to see, hopefully. Um, and just, just a shout out to everyone who helped me compile these lists. Um, they're really, really helpful to have them in this format. All right, so first we're gonna start off with Lorenzo Brambila, who actually uh, won the tournament with his Scheherazade list. Um, this is something that you're going to want to be taking a look at, especially if Scheherazade does not get banned by the Force of Will company. Um, this might be uh, one of the main archetypes, or I guess that's not right, uh, templates is the word I'm looking for. One of the main templates that you're going to be looking at for how to run Scheherazade after Lapis Cluster rotates. Um, notably, there's no Severing Winds in Final Battle in this list, so she has to rely on things like Viola to do combat tricks, as well as Dijini as uh, a source of removal for other decks. The other thing you're going to notice here is the Elemental Blast. This is something that most people are not running in New Frontiers because they don't need to. Um, but Elemental Blast, and you're going to see it on screen here, 
It deals 400 to a target resonator, but if you torrent it does 700 instead, and that's really useful for getting rid of your opponent's uh, puppet makers, um, which are the other big card that Shiharazad likes to run as a way of just you know getting more cards and um, buffing up your uh, dolls. In general, this is not something that is um, uh, too foreign for most US players. In fact, I can already hear the groans in the comments section about this list uh, because people don't like Shahrazad in the United States. And probably around the world, there's like the sense of we should probably just get rid of her. Um, but regardless, I'm, it's kind of refreshing to see a deck that isn't just running like final battles and severing wins and all these like really powerful cards that we got in Lapis clusters. So this is this is pretty great. Um, you're also going to notice that the enormous effigy is in the sideboard, um, and I think that's mostly just because it's kind of clunky and you don't want to draw into it. And especially like in a limited format, like uh, like cluster only, um, you want more live cards than dead cards because um, there are other cards in this list that are just way more powerful. Things like Winds of Salvation um, and Winds of Vitality to boost your attack. It's way more important to have this in the sideboard, especially if you're running against something like aggro. Um, you can just turbo flip Sherry at that point. So uh, again, congratulations to Lorenzo. Uh, good luck in Japan um, from somebody who's not going. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is the first place Shahrazad list. All right, so next up we have second place Saul Aguado. Uh, he was running Gil, and Gil is one of the big... Um, big J rulers uh, in cluster only because he's so controlling and can just search out all of his answers. He's, he's really, really good. Um, and that's mostly because of things like um, the Paladin who can search out all of the other Leaf Rangers. And yes, I'm using Leaf Rangers because of course I'm a Power Rangers nerd. Why would I be anything else? Um, anyway, <laughs> that's just my little tangent. Um, you're going to notice there's a lot of um, singleton basic stones, and that's because he's running Absolute Awareness. And that's going to be on screen too, because that's not a common card that we see in New Frontiers. It's uh, it's just a basic ramp spell um, that's also a spirit magic. So Gil gets to make use of it. It can either be a, a one cost or it can be a two cost based on you know what side you're on. Um, but it's a spirit magic, and you get to ramp into a stone, and it's rested, but it's still a stone. Um, and that's pretty important, because uh, you just ramp in front of your opponent's resources, and then you can start doing really, really crazy stuff. The other thing is the, the Ancient Library. Now, someone corrected me uh, on this in a previous video, and that's that's great, because I keep forgetting what this card does. Um, but basically, it's, it's an addition. It comes in and um, you, it cantrips, and so you draw a card, but then it makes all of your wind chants everywhere into spirit magic. So things like Winds of Salvation that are just an aura normally, suddenly they get to be uh, a spirit magic. And then suddenly your fairer spells, which are you know obviously not spirit magics, they can suddenly become spirit magics, and they're free, essentially, because you remove an elemental, and suddenly you have the green will to just cast fairer spell. Um, which is absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. It's super cool to see that Gil is actually doing pretty well, and it's cool to see him in the top two. Um, in New Frontiers, the most notable list we've seen so far is from uh, Collinsville, where uh, a Gil list made the top eight. Um, but that's all we've seen of Gil so far, but definitely keep your eye on Gil going forward, especially if none of these cards get hit. Um, Lorite might, but I don't think it will. Um, Favor spell is probably also not going to be hit, so this deck is probably going to be relatively intact going forward into the new, uh, into the new, uh, new frontiers format with new Valhalla. There's a lot of new coming, so um, again, uh, thanks to Saul Aguado for playing this list and for getting second. Congratulations, man! So in third place was an IU list. Uh, this is obviously going to be different because a lot of IU's tools are um, shortened because she doesn't have Lapis Cluster to use. Um, in addition to uh, Rhea Cluster. So there's going to be, it's a pretty generic um, idea to just uh, run a bunch of souls. Uh, uh, Roar of Time is another card, and uh, Resuscitating Will is also another card that um, Ayu gets access to to sort of um, give her OTK possibilities. Um, but because uh, this list is so huge, uh, the stone list and the sideboard are actually on the next slide. So I'll, I'll keep talking about it. But for the most part, you're going to notice like there's some pretty weird uh, choices in here, mostly because like I use trying to pack in every tool that she can possibly get, including the Distortion of Time, which you'll see on screen as well. Um, Distortion of Time is an amazing card. I love it so much, and you'll notice that in the stone list, she's actually playing um, this player, I'm sorry, Enrique is actually playing uh, four Time Stones, which is really, really different and cool. 
Um, but he's also playing two Nullstone in the sideboard, along with a bunch of other uh, black cards. Um, things like uh, Ray the Black Owl, so he can flip and do amazing things with Zero. Uh, zero, if you don't remember what it does, it's on the screen right now. Uh, zero just prevent, gives, kind of gives everything pseudo barrier because your opponent can't target things without triggering her ability. Um, just keep in mind that if you're running a Zero, or I guess a Ray slash Zero in this situation, um, you can't target your stuff without popping your own bubble, so to speak. So um, just be careful of that. Other than that, um, uh, you made top three, so congratulations to Enrique for that. Next up, we have uh, fourth place uh, Juanma Marti. Uh, he's running the, or they are running. I'm not really sure, uh, so I'm just gonna just gonna play it safe. Uh, they are running the Time Spinning Witch. Um, and the thing about the Time Spinning Witch that you're gonna notice is uh, Mosasaurus, Distortion of Time, uh, and uh, Dragonlord's Breath are the main cards that the Time Spinning Witch wants to use to sort of lock down your field and to keep you from uh, playing stuff. And you get to play on her time, essentially. That's the whole gimmick. Um, you're going to notice the one of Dino Rider to work with Dinosaur Surfacing. And you're going to notice that there's only uh, two Dinosaur Surfacing and three Mosasaurus in the list. And I think that's mostly because they wanted to pack in more mid-range cards. Things like Misty Dragon Spirit and uh, Laureate's Disciples as a way of sort of playing the mid-range game. Um, and that, I don't know how well that aided him. I mean, he's definitely, or they are definitely in fourth place. So that's definitely something to speak to. Also, you're going to notice uh, the Last Thunder is in the sideboard, and this is Blue's only real board wipe that destroys things. They have a ton of things that bounces stuff, or um, they might rest things, but for the most part, Final Thunder is just like a straight up kill everything on the board, um, you're done, uh, Just and I thin my deck four cards, which is pretty interesting. Um, you don't want to draw multiples of these, but I think for the for the sake of just destroying your opponent's board, it's worth uh, having it in the side, especially if you're running against something that is a little bit more aggressive, like Pandas or Kyrick in this format. Um, and of course, uh, the last thing I want to point out is Idols. Um, idols in this list are really, really great. Um, this Idol right here, I'm going to have it on screen, is actually um, one of the more interesting ones because you can actually use the Time Spinning Witch's Time Will to, f um, to funnel into this effect and give yourself a uh, will of any attribute um, for free, because you just generate a time will uh, every single turn for the most part, and then this card, uh, not only do you get to generate any will that you want, you get to draw a card. Um, and then if you're doing that at instant speed and your opponent's playing something like, you know, um, Cleaning Doll to, you know, flip their extra deck back over or something like that, um, you can actually make them whiff, which is kind of cool. So um, I think this card is really, really interesting. Uh, this is something that Jeremy Franklin drew a lot of inspiration from when looking at GP Rome, and uh, it's really similar to his list in general. So uh, I really like this list. I, I like Time Spending Witch, as as you might know from last week's video. Um, but yeah, congratulations to uh, Juanma Marti for getting fourth place with this really, really cool list. Next up, we have a uh, fifth place Javier Herraras, and I'm gonna say that one more time: Javier Herraras. Uh, who got fifth place with his version of Time Spinning Witch, but you're gonna notice there's some significant differences. Um, first of all, it's a mono blue deck, but it's using things like idols to filter into white for things like Venus, or even to things like the Kingdom of Diversity. And if you're not familiar with the Kingdom of Diversity, it's on the screen right now. Um, this card is really, really good. It was actually in the previous list, but I wanted to talk about it here, because uh, this list makes the most of it. So it has the ability to freeze your opponent, um, but it also runs a bunch of one drop that are all um, multiple races, uh, especially uh, Venus, who's a historical, and I believe uh, 6H's Luminaries. So she's able to count for two races for this card. Um, and just all of these one drops you can use to just swarm the field, including Ayu, uh, steal their one drops, uh, proc your own kingdom for even more damage, uh, uh, Ray, who flips into zero to protect all your guys, and then of course Freyla, who's not only a dark elf, but I believe she's also a wicked spirit. So she's able to just um, come in, do a bunch of damage, um, pump your other guys. Um, if you're pumping like a, um, like a blue elemental, or, I'm sorry, Blue Leaf, uh, you can just sack it at the end of the turn, bounce something your opponent controls, so that way you don't lose it to the effect of Freyla. Uh, Freyla. It's really, really cool. And of course, if you're um, just needing to switch gears, uh, the Lorite, Mosasaurus, Dinosaur Surfacing, and the uh, uh, Dragon Lord's Breath are in the sideboard as a transformational side. So you can just side into everything else. Um, you can probably get rid of things like... Um, I'm not exactly sure what this player would side, would side out necessarily, but I imagine that you keep in things like Distortion of Time. Um, Ray the Black Owl is probably not a bad choice either, but 
I guess it really just depends on your matchup. So um, this this list is actually probably the most unique one I've seen so far, and uh, congratulations for getting fifth place with it. It's really really cool. Next up we have uh, the guild list that got sixth place, uh, courtesy of Jose uh, Antana. Um, so it, there's not much going on here. It's a normal guild list, uh, but the thing that's really cool about this list is you can see that there's flex spots in this list as a control list, um, as opposed to um, other players who have only run like two white leaf or three white leaf or one white leaf. Um, you can play a full complement of four and the deck still works, or you can play a one arrival of the hero, um, which is okay because you can side the others. Um, and then of course you can either main board the, the leaf assassins or side them. Um, you can side glints as a way of like uh, moving into something like uh, getting rid of your vanish for a glint or something like that or getting rid of your arrival of the hero for a glint depending on what you're playing against um, so I, I think this list is just you know it's it's more of the same but it, it really showcases that Gil has flex points uh, I would say that's the fifth element white leaf uh, arrival of the hero and maybe uh, the ancient library as well just depending on what you're drawing so um, congratulations to uh, Jose for getting this list into the top eight and uh, we're just gonna keep moving on. All right, so next up we have uh, Enrico Maria Rustico, who got seventh place with Gil. Uh, and again, this kind of just showcases that um, Gil is just a really flexible ruler in terms of what he can use in his main board. Um, you can use a full complement of uh, white leaves. They're running three this time instead of four, as we saw with uh, uh, Jose's list just a little bit ago. Um, you can play one Winds of Salvation, uh, and just keep recycling it with your with your four ethereal wind magic stones, um, etc. So this just kind of showcases this. But the one thing I want to talk about in this list is uh, Viola, which he most certainly uh, brought into uh, games two and three against things like um, Time Spinning Witch, uh, the Gill matchup. Um, Shahrazad, like Viola actually does a lot against those matchups because not only does she negate Seed of Rebirth for the most part because you just, you banish her and you remove the targets and then Seed whiffs so they get no value for three mana. Um, it also allows you to do things like, um, uh, I believe it gives J Resonators flying, but don't quote me on that. Um, I, I will double check and let you know. Um, but she also is just like a way of like defending, removing these in the graveyard, uh, especially like all the elementals that Gil runs. Um, if you're gonna target uh, with, you know, something, if you're gonna try and remove something, just getting rid of your opponent's resources is really, really good for that. Um, so I, I just really approve of Viola. She gets rid of so much in the meta, especially with things like uh, Evil Elemental Uprising also being played. Um, these two cards together are probably the reason that we do not see the availability of a reanimator strategy right now. So just keep that in mind, especially going forward. We do have some reanimator cards in this cluster um, that you know give us that option, um, but currently there's no real viable uh, reanimated strategy because of these cards and I just wanted to highlight Viola specifically I think she's really underrated and she's really really strong to play so um, congratulations to Enrico uh, Enrico Maria Rustico for his uh, for their seventh place uh, win and then uh, eighth place was Francisco Jose Diaz uh, who is running another guild list um, and that makes a total of I believe um, four guild lists in the top, if I'm right. Uh, there was the top two, and there was the last three, so yeah, that's a total of four. Um, that's a pretty good conversion, um, in general, in my opinion. Uh, just the fact that Gil is so prolific, he's actually more prolific than Scheherazade, and there's only one in the top eight. So that kind of gives you, um, a benchmark of how powerful this ruler is in Cluster alone, and it might be something worth looking at when you go into the new Cluster, um, if you're playing New Frontiers. Um, so again, congratulations to Francisco for winning, and uh, I think that's all the lists we have today for Madrid, and we're just going to move on to Paris. Alright, so just a reminder that GP Paris, just like GP Madrid, uh, was Rea Cluster only, um, and that just changes the ban list uh, a little bit. You get to use the Ginny in your Scheherazade list, that's about it. Um, so for the most part, uh, we're, we saw about 63 players turn out for this. Of course, if you weren't in, uh, if you weren't in Madrid, you might have been in Paris, or you might not have gone to the tournaments at all. Um, but you're going to see uh, kind of a, a similar spread to what we saw last time, except there were eight Reyes um, in in this 63-man um, event, which I think was really interesting. Um, but anyway, there were 11 gills, like I said, 8 Reyes, 8 Tagris, 8 Scheherazade, 7 Kyrick, 5 Imols, 5 Time Spinning Witch, 4 Ayu, 4 Shayla, um, 1 Scarlet, um, 
one of the uh, the new Al Hamat from the from the Lost Tome structure deck, and one uh, Freyla, which I thought was pretty cool. All right, so now we're gonna move into the top eight deck list for GP Paris. And uh, the winner of the event was Federico Sapini. If you remember, um, he actually won GP Rome with a very similar list, but he also won it with uh, with Gil. Um, so congratulations to him. Uh, we've seen a lot of Gil lists up to this point. It's pretty straightforward as to what Gil does. Um, I'm not gonna go on too much more about him, but just notice that he has the ability to run as many Arrival of the Hero as he wants, as many Fifth Elements as he wants. Uh, Ancient Library is only at two. He actually plays a, a Wind Blade. Um, which is not only a spirit magic, but it's also an elemental, so it's really similar to um, uh, uh, the other elemental that is most associated with Gil, um, Gentle Breeze Elemental. So, um, congratulations for winning the event, and we're just going to keep moving on. Next up, we have uh, second place David Doe, uh, who got second place with his Scheherazade list. Um, this is a pretty standard uh, Scheherazade shell for the most part. I mean, he's playing... Um, uh, I forget exactly what this card is. I'm going to show it on screen because I just don't remember right now. Um, but this card actually has like multiple modes which activate uh, multiple different effects if you have Legend 5, Legend 3, or Legend 1. Um, the other card I want to highlight here is actually uh, the Shifting Minstrel. And he played uh, four of this card, which I think is pretty interesting. It's not a doll, um, but it is a resonator that with Legend 1 becomes a 5-5. Five five. So I think that's pretty interesting that Scheherazade um, is utilizing this. Um, in addition to the last audience and some of the other more aggressive dolls, um, it's pretty cool to see that you you know like a five five is nothing to scoff at, especially um, as a one cost resonator. That's not too bad. It's just a way of like um, pushing a little bit more tempo in this um, in this more aggressive variation of Scheherazade. Uh, if anything, uh, they're playing more um, Winds of Vitality to kind of bump that up and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, um, this is a pretty standard Scheherazade list, um, nothing really more to talk about here, but congratulations to uh, David Doe for getting second place. Next up, we have uh, third place Carlo Drebenstedt, who actually, uh, <laughs> they top with Kyrick, which I did not think was um, a thing. I did not understand that uh, Kyrick was maybe um, a little bit more uh, prolific in this meta than originally thought. Um, but for the most part, it's just it's, it's just a straight black version of Kyrick. Um, and the reason that you run the Null Stone is because it's really the only black stone that is a true a true dual stone in this cluster. Um, so I think Null Stone is actually going to be pretty important going forward because you get access to things like Raid the Black Owl for one. And then, of course, if you want to play things like Thought Control or Black Tears in the sideboard, you have that option now. Um, the other thing you might notice here is that uh, they're playing the White Leaf um, as just a way of outlasting probably against things like Control or even against um, just uh, uh, other Kyrick lists or other aggressive lists. It's just a really quick way of just like pitching to gain 600 life. Um, that's that's pretty solid. Um, and because you're playing the Null Stone, you get access to Majin Dark Elf, which is a really strong one-drop 6-6. Six, six. Um, I can imagine that... Um, David Doe would have an issue with Majin Dark Elf, even if he's running Shifting Minstrel, um, because Shifting Minstrel obviously is a 5-5 as compared to a 6-6, but that's where you use your last audience and other cards to sort of get around that. Um, however, I, I don't want to ruminate too much on that. This is a pretty standard um, rush list, uh, red rush list. Um, they're playing the one dragon in case you you know want the god's art or in case you have um, excuse me in case you have issues against blacklists uh, something like um, like Rhea you know they can't touch this card <laughs> which is uh, which is notable um, they're also playing Welser as a way of like doubling up all of their spells so if you spend five will um, sorry not will uh, strength counters to play um, ground and air supremacy not only do you get uh, to destroy uh, I'm sorry, I'm not destroying anything yet, but you get to bring out a Pyali and you get to destroy if you want to, which I think is really, uh, really kind of cool. So, um, this list is really kind of interesting. Uh, I think it's interesting that Kirk will, um, I think it's interesting that Kirk will still be around a little bit, um, especially since you get access to Nullstone, uh, which is a, which is a red stone for the most part, so just keeping that in mind, uh, Imagine Dark Elf is a really strong red resonator, so congratulations to Carlo for getting uh, third place, and we're just going to keep going forward. Next up we have uh, fourth place is Roman Stark getting uh, fourth place with a, with a Gil, um, a Gil deck, which is pretty cool. Um, again, uh, Gil is probably one of the more prolific rulers. The one difference you're going to see here is he's actually main boarding, um, 
uh, disciples in the main board and then he's also using ultra awakening as just like a win button which i think is totally fine i mean it's it's a plus two thousand plus two thousand so that's pretty hilarious if you can get it off and make it happen um, but then he's also playing the blooded winds in the sideboard as a way of just sort of uh, wiping the board um, on your opponent's side or giving minus six minus six to your opponent's board which might wipe it uh, and because you're just passively gaining mystery counters from uh, Gilapis I don't see that as a bad idea especially since you don't have final battle so congratulations to Roman Stark for getting fourth place next up we have uh, fifth places uh, fifth place Lee uh, Sang Piab uh, getting fifth place with his uh, Scheherazade list. Um, for the most part, this is again just a standard Scheherazade list. They're main boarding um, Enormous Effigy, the variant version. Um, and of course, again, there's Viola in the main board, which is a basically just another clone copy of Doll Audience, but it pumps everything and gives it symbol skills and stuff like that, so that's useful. And then they're main, uh, they're not main boarding it, but they're definitely sideboarding some Rachels and Null Pages, which I think is, you know, definitely um, something that Cherizad can do. Rachel, I think, is pretty good in the list. Um, not only does she uh, disrupt your opponent's tempo, but she also gets to search out any of your answers in the main board, especially if you have trouble getting to your Puppet Makers, or your Lorites, or um, your Lorites Disciples, things like that. So it's pretty cool to see this in the sideboard. Um, as a way of sort of dealing with the control matchup. Congratulations to Lee for getting fifth place, and we're just gonna keep going. Next up we have six plates, uh, Julia Happel with her Kyrick list. Um, this is a pretty standard, um, we, we've already seen a list very similar to this. For the most part, it's just uh, plug all your guys, um, swing with your guys, and uh, disrupt your opponent's plays with things like Thought Control in, the, in games two and three, as well as Black Tears. And uh, one of the more under, Underappreciated cards, I think, in this entire cluster is Earthquake Observer. Um, I'm gonna put it on the screen just because uh, the art is the best art. Let's just be honest, guys. Um, anyway, Earthquake Observer. If your opponent is playing something like a control list and they're trying to uh, hamper your plays with things like uh, Winds of Vitality or you know they're casting things on on your turn, um, they become a uh, plus two plus two with barrier, and those effects stack. So if your opponent plays multiple chance. Um, at quick ass speed in your turn, they're just making your guy even bigger. Um, which is nothing to scoff at, so um, I think it's pretty good to have this in the, in the in the sideboard, especially if your opponent doesn't have a board wipe, um, because he's really hard to get rid of if you don't have some sort of board wipe. So, um, anyway, congratulations to Julia for getting 6th uh, place. Next up we have 7th uh, place is uh, Carlo Carboni. Um, this is a pretty standard uh, gill list uh, for the most part. Um, there's not really much more I need to highlight here, um, other than that the disciples are in the are in the side, which is a standard place for them to to be. Um, so again, not much to say here. Uh, Gil is a really strong control ruler. Um, keep an eye out for him. I'm gonna keep saying that uh, just because I think Gil is really good. Um, so keep an eye out for him uh, going forward. And last but not least, uh, we have Samuel Doe uh, getting eighth place with. Uh, his guild list. And again, this is a pretty standard uh, shell. They're just main boarding um, one uh, destruction of the portal, and they're also main boarding the Ultra Awakening as a way of just uh, winning the game outright, just doing a crap ton of damage uh, really, really fast. They're also playing one fifth element and one arrival of the hero, so I think they're trying to, like, um, their play style just establishes tempo really early and then just uh, establishes board presence pretty quick and makes it really hard for your opponent to fight back. Um, so congratulations to all the players uh, that went to GP Paris, congratulations to Samuel Doe for getting 8th place, and uh, we're going to just move on now to the New Frontiers tournament in Malaysia. Alright, next up we have the New Frontiers GP that happened uh, at GP Malaysia. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Alan uh, Ching Kaloon, who uh, on the plane ride to uh, Gen Con Indy was actually sending me uh, lists and gotcha log codes and like all the information for, for everything that was going on in this tournament. Um, I just really appreciate uh, his willingness to help me out with this. Uh, so uh, give the GP Malaysia guys some love if you're at Gen Con. And, uh, you know, like their page if you want more Malaysia content for sure. Uh, link down, link will be down in the description for that. Um, but yeah, so uh, we'll get into the details of this tournament in the next slide. Um, but it was a little bit different, so I just want to make sure that I describe it to you before we get into the top eight lists. 
Um, but first of all, uh, we want to talk about uh, the ruler breakdown. So uh, there were 47 people in this tournament, seven of which were playing Scheherazade, seven were playing Fairer. Uh, there were six Lumias, five Kyrick, four Imul, three Scarlet, two Rhea, two Ayu, two Shayla, and about nine other rulers. Um, some of those singletons made it into the top 16. Um, I actually didn't put all top 16 lists up. Um, uh, Alan actually asked me if I could remove a list um, from the running, which you'll see. Uh, I made a note of that in the next slide for you guys. Um, just so you, if you're wondering why there's only seven lists, uh, that's why. Um, but we wanted to uh, sort of give you an idea of what the top 16 looked like, but I didn't want to fit it into this video. So if you actually want to see the top 16 lists instead of just the top eight, let me know down in the comments and I can figure out a way to make that happen uh, in the future. Um, and we'll add them to the description if you guys really want those lists. There was like a flute list and a few other lists that were really, really cool. So if you if you want that, uh, let me know down in the comments section down below. And I'll make sure to, you know, interact with you guys around that. So, um, so yeah. All right, guys. So here are the top uh, seven deck lists um, from GP Malaysia. Um, these are all going to be ranked by... Um, uh, the day one seed after uh, after Swiss, um, but Alan wanted me to let you know that uh, players were randomized for top 16 into draft, um, and they were put into two different pods. Um, so you had eight people in one pod and eight people in another, and then the top four from each pod would proceed to the top eight and compete. Um, and then first seat would compete with fourth seat, and second seat would complete, uh, compete with uh, third seat. Um, so the way that I arrange these lists is that I uh, arrange them based on what the top eight um, ended up being and then uh, I just looked at seeds and just put them in order um, as much as I can uh, and if these lists are out of order by any means um, just let me know and I'll and I'll we'll try and figure it out down in the comment section down below um, but all of the lists are going to be available um, with the exception of the top 16 um, the top eight lists will be uh, available down below in the description minus uh, one list because of a special recommendation so first up uh, we had the first place uh, winner of the event uh, their name was jordan i believe jordan tan um, congratulations to jordan uh, and enjoy your time in Japan if you're going. Uh, this is a pretty uh, standard Scheherazade list from the makeup right now. Uh, Scheherazade in New Frontiers is considered the best deck, so you're going to be playing for the mirror, and of course uh, that's why you have the two uh, water transformation magic and the millennia bonds and the shades. And uh, Gil Lapis is a new addition. Uh, he's just a like a really hard to, to counter resonator without something like Winds of Salvation. So that's why he's in the list. Um, but for the most part, this is a standard Scheherazade list. There's not much more to say. Um, there's some blazers in the sideboard, violas as well. Um, and we've talked about violas during this video and they're pretty much used for the same reason in New Frontiers as well. Um, but congratulations to Jordan for winning the event and uh, have a good time in Japan. Uh, next up, <laughs> We have uh, Scarlet who got second place. Um, Don't let your memes be dreams is probably the best name for a deck list I've ever seen. Um, and this is a pretty fun looking list, so let's just break this down a little bit. Um, so they're playing uh, four Heaven Sundering Dragon Palms, four Majin Dark Elf, four of the Variant Dread Touch, which is just a 6-6 six, six with swiftness, and it's a, it's a dinosaur. They're playing uh, three Melgus from Echoes of the New World, Three Abduls, uh, three of the seven luminaries that bounces um, an addition um, and, and buffs your defense a little bit. They're playing three Mosasaurus, three um, Dino Riders, uh, two Demonic Dead, uh, two Nyarlathotep's Flames, uh, two, I believe this is Dark Revolution, uh, two Final Battle, two White Leaf, and then three uh, Ancient Barrier. So this list is really really interesting and the best part is that it sides into umir combo uh, which is <laughs> hilarious to me um this list is super fun looking um i'm really glad scarlet made it into the top eight because uh scarlet has not had enough love uh, she's a really cool ruler i don't know what else to say about this list other than it's just it's so it's it's just weirdly beautiful um to watch this list uh to see this list in the top eight so uh, thank you for making this list, and uh, yeah, we're just going to keep moving on. Uh, next up, uh, third place went to a Lumia list. This is a pretty standard uh, Lumia list from the from the basic... Uh, it's ever since City of Ataractia came out. This is the pretty standard uh, Lumia list because you can uh, push out a Rachel and do swiftness damage. You can also push out um, 
Blazers, not only are you going to rip a card out of their hand and gain a counter, but because of Ataracti, you're going to gain Swiftness, which means it's going to be tapped on your end phase, and Lumia can trigger it and rip another card out of their hand all on the same turn. Um, so that's a really, uh, really good combination of cards. Um, and then, of course, they're playing the one Valentina in case, you know, they just need to get rid of more stuff. And they're playing Jupiter in case they need to recover resonators, draw cards, um, bounce your resonators back to hand. Prissia is also there as a way of destroying your opponent's resonators upon enter and upon attack. And, of course, uh, because you're playing City, um, you also get the ability to gain Swiftness. And uh, that effect gets off uh, right away. So you're dealing 10 damage uh, to something. Or, or You're technically not dealing damage, but you're... You're coming in, you're targeting something, and killing it if it has less uh, defense than your attack, I believe is the way it goes. So, um, this list is actually pretty cool, um, and it can often go into uh, three evil elemental uprising and more Valentinas in case you just want to do um, just absurd amounts of damage for this one four drop. So, um, congratulations to the Lumia player for getting uh, into the top eight, and we're just going to keep going. Uh, next up, we have um, a favorite list that made top four, I believe. Top, we're gonna say top eight in general, because um, I want to make sure all of these are in the top eight. But I'm not exactly sure um, what they were in terms of uh, placement because of seeding and whatever. But um, the thing about uh, favorite lists, at least in this um, in these in this region where GPs are held, a lot of them are playing uh, Shabu Jing in addition to Maribel, so you can play Shabu Jing on turn two. Or you can go um, to turn three and play a Mary Bell there, so you have access to Fairer's spell. And this is something that was uh, just discussed with me down in the comments below, which was really good insight because I never really thought about that. I'm not really generally playing Fairer, so um, if you want a closer look at this list, it'll be of course uh, be down in the description down below, um, and you can check these lists out down there as well. Um, but congratulations to uh, this person for getting into the top eight. Next up, uh, we have our first Kyrick list that we've seen in a, in a, in a while, uh, at least a few weeks. Um, this is a pretty standard Kyrick shell for the most part in New Frontiers. You have things like Sylvia because it's just super good for a green card. And then of course you have uh, the four favors spell and the three severing winds. And their interesting uh, card here is uh, Lorite. They're actually main boarding Lorite. And I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's just because they anticipated um, something more being played uh, where Lorite would be more uh, relevant, but um, it got them into the top eight, so I'm not going to say anything more about that. Um, they are mainboarding the one Welser as a way of like copying all of their effects from uh, fire chance and stuff like that, so you get to do um, multiple instances of damage from high speed, um, you get to do multiple paths we part, uh, multiple heaven sundering dragon palms, etc. So that's actually pretty great. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty standard Kyrick shell. Uh, it's pretty aggressive, so you're going to see things like Piggies and uh, Sylvia's doing a lot of the damage, as well as Paelli's. Um, and congratulations to uh, this player for getting into the top 8. Uh, next up we have a Junk Favor, uh, which is a more mid rangey version of a Favor list than Red Favor. Um, this plays more black and white stones as a way of playing things like Final Battles, Altars, and uh, I'm not seeing any resuscitating will in this list, so I think that's really interesting as well. Um, but for the most part, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a bunch of elves, and then uh, you're just backing them all up with things like altar as a way of uh, uh, doing minus four for each elf that you sack. Um, just getting rid of your opponent's board in that way. And then of course you flip Fairer uh, with Flying Cloud. Um, to just do a whole bunch more damage. Um, flying Cloud is really, really good because it gives um, favor flying and plus two, plus two if it's not bestowed onto another wind resonator. So that's pretty great. And then, of course, you're just ramping into a bunch of stones because you're flipping with altars on board. And then, of course, because you're running black, you get access to final battle so you can wipe your opponent's board. And it's just more trying to play a more mid rangey game. Um, and uh, that's mostly what this deck is trying to do. So congratulations to this player for getting into the top eight. And uh, last, and, and maybe least, depending on your opinion, <laughs> uh, we have uh, one more blue Scheherazade list. So Scheherazade um, going into the blue uh, color scheme is probably for the best because again it gets access to Charlotte's water transformation magic additional cancels and millennia bond um, and then it just gets to uh, do more battlefield tricks as a way of just uh, stabilizing itself and it's playing against the mirror excuse me if it's playing against the mirror uh, these cards actually do a whole lot to uh, stabilize you against the mirror match especially if they're not a blue Shahrazad list so oh, excuse me again um, 
So congratulations to uh, this player for also getting into the top 8 with their Scheherazade list. This is probably the best version of Scheherazade in New Frontiers. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, so congratulations to this player as well. Um, and of course, like I said before, uh, there are only 7 lists because one of those lists... Um, because they're going to another GP, um, I'm just going to keep that under wraps for them and uh, keep that just out of reach for other people who uh, who might be interested in what that player is playing. So um, thanks again to Alan for getting me all these lists, and we're just going to move into my thoughts after seeing all of these lists going forward. Alright guys, now we come to my favorite part of these videos, which is where I get to just sort of like ruminate and think about... Um, what these GPs sort of reveal about the meta or about where the game is going. And then of course, uh, any of these thoughts you guys get to talk about with me uh, down below in the comment section. So make sure if there's anything you just really want to talk about that I don't cover here, or if you agree or disagree with some of my assertions in this, um, just let me know down in the comment section down below. I'm more than open to learning about this game, so it really helps me to learn uh, more when you guys talk to me about stuff. You might have insight that I don't have, so um, just throwing that out there. But anyway, let's just get into my thoughts. So first of all, I can happily say that uh, Kirik is not just gone, uh, you know, post-rotation. I think it's pretty great that we get to see a black variation of the list. Um, to be completely honest, I think the, the green version of the list, and you know, this might be something everyone agrees with, but the green version of the list, with all its cancels and just being able to push through on its aggression, it just seems a little uh, linear. This seems a little bit more fun, because you get to play things like Welser and Ray the Black Owl and Freyla and the Majin Dark Elf um, and the Null Stone, so you get to play things that are a little bit more controly. so it kind of skews more mid-range aggro. And not that, you know, green wasn't necessarily mid-range aggro, um, it's just more like, it's not focusing so much on canceling your stuff reactively, it's more playing your stuff uh, proactively. Um, so I like things like playing Ray, um, playing Thought Control in games 2 and 3, things like that. Um, Command of Life and Death is also another card that you could potentially play in this list. I don't know if you would want to, that might mean that you're playing more more of the raid than you want to. Um, you might be playing uh, other things more than you want to. But either way, I just like this idea. It just gets my brain thinking in a different way. And so I'm really glad that Kyrick is like more um, more present and it's more black than it was um, than it is in New Frontiers. So that's pretty great. All right, next up in three, two, one, you guessed it. Uh, Gil is the number one list that I'm looking at going forward. I think Gil is. Um, if Sherazad does not get banned, um, Gil is probably a really good answer to her in the control match. Um, not only that, but Time Spinning Witch, Tagris, IU, um, and some other um, aggro decks are also possible answers to it. But I think Gil is just really, really consistent. He gets really good resonators um, that can't be cancelled, like uh, Inheritor of the Stars, Gil Lapis. He gets really strong... Uh, cards in Leaf Paladin that just add all your elementals to hand, turning on your fifth element card. Um, Winds of Salvation uh, in combination with Ancient Library, Lorite, and Ethereal Wind Magic Stone is a really good combination. Um, you remove, um, you play the Ancient Library, you remove Winds of Salvation after it's already been used with Lorite, and then you just bring it back with Ethereal Wind Magic Stone, and then you're not behind in stones because you're moving ahead with things like Absolute Awareness. Um, and then, of course, you're producing will on your ruler and J-ruler side. So it's really not that big of a deal to lose one magic stone to get back a really prolific spell like Winds of Salvation. Um, so I think Gil just has a really good set of really strong cards, um, especially with the ability to just use Lorite the best out of any, any ruler in the game currently. Um, I think Gil is, you don't want to sleep on this ruler. If you're not playtesting him already, you probably should be if you're looking forward to the New Frontiers meta um, that starts after September. I know I'm going to be testing Gil a lot just to kind of get an idea of like how he runs and how he plays. Um, I just need to get into the mind of this play style um, because Gil can be kind of difficult to use because of all the tools he has to offer. So. Um, again, just keep looking at Gil. I think he's something you're going to want to look at. Um, I already kind of harped on Time Spending Witch a lot last video, so I'm not going to talk about it too much in this one. Um, but Gil is definitely the ruler uh, alongside Scheherazade and Time Spending Witch and Kyrick and Tagris that I think are going to be really good. So I think I mentioned in uh, my GP Rome video that the real benefit of seeing a cluster 
uh, events like GP Rome, Madrid, and Paris is that we kind of get a sense of like what half of the meta is going to look like going into uh, the new Valhalla, New Frontiers format. Um, I think because we're losing things like Lumia, uh, Dark Tree, and a few other um, cards like Fox, um, we, we got to figure out the meta again because every rotation is a huge meta shift. And I think right now, just based on the just based on the events that we're seeing, without any cards being revealed to us from New Valhalla quite yet, we're seeing sort of like two tiers of play. So the top tier is uh, control lists, things like uh, Scheherazade, uh, Guild Gifted Conjurer, and then the Time Spinning Witch. Who um, all of these are running green, and green is probably the best color in Force of Will. Period. Um, just because of all of the cancels and the uh, flexibility in what you get to use in that color scheme. Um, mostly, a lot of those are spirit magics. Um, Elemental Blast is one of those by by far. True Blade was also one of those, but it got banned. So just keep that in mind. Um, green is by far the best color, um, but Time Spinning Witch does something really interesting, and this is sort of the same thing for Ayu. She uses blue cards that, you know, she utilizes the best, but they're even appearing in lists like Ayu. Time Distortion is a really powerful card, um, and especially like I'm running a Shayla list right now that's in cluster. Um, cluster only, and I can just jam four time stones and distortion of time and just lock you out after I've rested your board um, with Shayla's God's Art. So that's not something to scoff at at all. Um, so distortion of time um, and the time spinning witch are all like really good um, cards that we're seeing in the meta, and we haven't really seen blue do that much in Force of Will. Blue is notoriously the worst color, but um, time spinning witch is kind of proving that that's not the case anymore, uh, especially going forward with all the with all the colors sort of balancing out a little bit more. Um, blue uh, might be a viable strategy going forward. Of course, this is the top tier, but what's the bottom tier? Well, the bottom tier is going to be things like Kyrick, Ayu, and uh, Pandas. Um, these uh, these decks are more aggressive. They're more uh, monocolor. Ayu is the rare exception because she gets to run basically everything if she wants to. Um, so she just picks the best 40 cards for her strategy, and she just uh, pilots those and sideboards a little bit. Um, this deck had an appearance in the top four of one of these GPs in cluster only. So I think Ayu is, is going to retain some power uh, and of course going forward um, she's just gonna gain more tools even though she's losing all of her tools from lapis cluster every new set gives her potential new tools especially if blue um, or I mean it doesn't even have to be blue really it can be any color any any color has like a really solid generic um, uh, just generic support for their color card um, she can potentially run that card um, because of her possession stone. So just keep that in mind. I think this is kind of the meta and the way it's forming. Uh, these are the lists I think you should be testing uh, or at least looking at going forward. Um, Rhea is also a deck you might want to look into a little bit too. I think she's right on the cusp of being very good. Um, we're definitely getting more black support from Lich and um, the Lucifer um, rulers coming out in New Valhalla. So Definitely keep her on your radar. Um, Glint is nothing to laugh at. It's a really strong card, and she utilizes that card the best. So this is the way I see the format shaping up, uh, at least the first half of it. And this is what the Rhea cluster is going to be looking like going into New Valhalla. And then, what about New Valhalla? Um, this is honestly my favorite card art, probably, um, besides the other Android art um, that is um, available for this. but. Um, I'm highly anticipating what this set is going to bring. Um, we're seeing uh, a pretty relatively diverse uh, top eight from the Rhea Cluster only tournaments in things like uh, Rome, Paris, and Madrid. So I'm really interested to see like what new Valhalla brings to this. Uh, we're getting spoilers uh, pretty soon here. I'm just looking at my looking at my schedule. I think we're getting them next week. Monday is when we're getting them. Um, that's you know, less than a week away as as to the, the making of this video. So I'm very excited to see um, what this set is going to bring, what it's going to do to this established meta that we saw right here, um, because New Valhalla is just gonna, really going to shake things up with the rune system, and uh, just very, very, very excited to see where this game goes. I'm just really hyped, guys. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so... What ruler are you looking forward to most in the next few months? 
I'm just going to give you another flash of these rulers. If none of these are really that appealing, what ruler are you most looking forward to playing in the next few months? Um, I am really, really anticipating not only Arthur, but I'm also going to be playing uh, Gil. Hopefully I'll get my hands on a Time Spinning Witch soon. Um, those, those three rulers are really the rulers that are piquing my interest right now. Um, I haven't seen what Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table androids do exactly, but... Um, just from the flavor alone, I'm probably going to really enjoy those. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. If there's anything anything you need to correct in the video because I just you know have my information a little bit off, let me know down there um, as well. It really helps the community stay on track. Um, so definitely, if you have something that needs to be corrected down in the comment section down below, please do that. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys down there and I'll be talking with you guys. Um, this was actually a pretty great weekend for, uh, for GPs in my opinion. I'm really interested in seeing what you guys think. So don't forget to like this video if you thought it was good or if you have um, some some constructive feedback, please leave it down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more content like this, if you want deck profiles of your favorite rulers, or even the Ruler School um, Teacher's Lounge podcast. Make sure you stay subscribed to this channel so you can do that, um, and recommend us to a friend. If they're getting into the game and you need a good way of getting them into the game, we're a great way to do that. So anyway guys, I've babbled on long enough. My name is Paul, and I'll see you next week for more GP and tournament reports. Catch you next time.